What is up YouTube? Welcome to Panfro Games and in today's video we're going to be going over some tips and tricks on how to get your shiny charm in Pokemon Legends Arceus. And currently I am working on my shiny charm so I figured hey might as well make a video on what is working best for me at the moment. So how do you get the shiny charm in general? Well one to get the shiny charm you need to have caught all 240 Pokemon in the Pokedex. Shaman and Darkrai do not count as these are both DLC Pokemon. So you do not need these Pokemon in general for the shiny charm. But step one is you need to have caught all 240 Pokemon in the decks. Step two, you need to have research level 10 on every Pokemon within that 240. And if you see a Pokeball next to the Pokemon's name, like all these legendary mythical Pokemon, that means I have gotten research level 10. As you can see in this Lucario, I only have research level 9, which means I need to get one more research point to get this to research level 10. Future Panfro here, I almost forgot to put in the shiny odds for the shiny charm. So, to make this simple, if you are doing a non-mass outbreak, so just a regular hunt, just a full odds Pokemon is going around, or you're just doing alpha hunting, you're going to have dex research level 10 on all Pokemon because that's how you get the shiny charm. So you're going to have dex research level 10 and the shiny charm. This is going to give you five shiny rolls, right? And this is going to put you at a 1 out of 819 chance. If you happen to get a perfect dex page, essentially doing all the tasks on a Pokemon's page, that puts you at a 1 out of 585, right? But if you're doing this in a mass outbreak, which you already start off with a 1 out of 158 without even dex research level 10 or the shiny charm. But if you have both of those, so you have the shiny charm, that gives you, instead of 26 rolls, now you have 30 rolls. And that puts you at a 1 out of 137 odds, which is pretty phenomenal so yes you want the shiny charm especially for alpha shiny hunting this is going to be necessary to do that so this can be a lot of work i mean this is a little bit daunting 240 pokemon to research level 10 but most likely throughout the story if you defeated the game you've gone to the post game good chance that you've probably done at least like 70 or 80 of these already right but how do you get the others right and if you are wondering where are some other pokemon like the babies or maybe some of the legendaries or mythicals or distortion pokemon well i made a video covering all the baby spawns so if you need to find where a baby pokemon is like elegant magby cleffa there's a video for that so definitely check that out and if you're wondering what pokemon are exclusive just to distortions uh to complete your decks like porygon magnemite and all that good stuff i made another video for that so definitely check out those videos before watching this video and now let's dive into the actual research tasks themselves so at the top of my screen, you can see the 216 number. I've completed 216 research level 10 Pokemon. So I have 24 left before I can get the shiny charm. And looking at any Pokemon's research task, right? You're going to see these double arrowed options. When you see a double arrow research task category. So number caught. Number caught for a lot of Pokemon is, I think for actually pretty much every Pokemon is going to give you double research task level. So you can see I've caught seven Vulpix, and by catching seven Vulpix, I have gotten a lot of research. So just catching one Vulpix gave me two research task levels, right? If I was just to defeat a one Vulpix where it didn't have the upper marker, that's only one level, right? So in this case, it is better for me to catch Vulpixes than to defeat them because I'm getting double the research. So when I completed two tasks of catching volt picks which was catching one volt picks and then catching my third volt picks that actually gave me four and of course this can stack on top of other things so catching one volt picks and then not being spotted when i caught it would actually give me two uh research because i caught it and i completed the category under it number you've caught without being spotted so your ultimate goal is to try to really combine doing research tasks together right and looking at like first form pokemon a lot of it is going to be catching the pokemon giving them food catch without being spotted or any other condition a lot of them are not focused on actually uh battling for the most part there's gonna be some battling of course like every single pokemon will but that's more for the second form pokemon or third form pokemon where it's going to be more about instead of just catching them well yes catching them so me one of the things but there's also going to be alphas involved. There's also going to be using different agile style or strong style moves or using different moves like flamethrower or fire blast in this sense or defeating them with a different type of move, right? So that's like the difference, right? 
So I do recommend when you're focusing on Pokemon that are in their first form, I recommend going for catching them and then Pokemon in their last form, I actually recommend using them in battle or trying to find their alpha species and farming that alpha species. It's going to make it a lot easier overall. Because our goal is to get as many Pokemon to research level 10 as possible, always bring a team of Pokemon who are not at research level 10 yet. So all six of these I'm currently working on. And to start, I do recommend doing mythicals and legendary Pokemon at the beginning, just because if they are not at resource level 10 when you caught them, that's the only time you're going to be able to catch them or battle them, so you're going to have to use them in combat. After that, it's sort of up to you, but I do recommend when you are going through different areas, you can use the ZR, ZL button to see the different Pokemon that are in each area that you can catch. And this is going to be really helpful for you to figure out, okay, what Pokemon should I bring to this area to defeat the Pokemon or catch the Pokemon that I need to catch or defeat or do research tasks with in order to complete my decks. So you know what you need to be hunting, but you also know what you need to bring to defeat these Pokemon. And you can see, okay, maybe Frostlass I need to use a fire type move against or something like that or, you know, or any other thing. So a lot of that's going to be really helpful. It's going to be a lot of planning, but just in general, just bring six Pokemon that you need to do task on and i do recommend last warm pokemon or pokemon that you can't catch naturally like sneezler impossible to catch naturally weavile impossible to catch naturally evl evolutions you can in distortions catch but you're gonna evolve into these and then you're gonna have to use these most likely so i recommend going from the hardest to the easiest and that's just gonna make it the fastest possible when selecting your team right and so when we're actually looking for pokemon because right now we are currently hunting this Elekid. So let's try to bring this Elekid over. And I do recommend for an item spread out. Actually, let's just go through the items real quick. Always, always, always have Ultra Balls. Always have some sort of Heavy Balls if you're trying to catch Alpha Pokemon. But the most important is going to be your Wing Balls and your Jet Balls. These are going to be your most important because you're going to be able to catch Pokemon from far away without disturbing them. You want to have some sort of berries with you as well. I just use orange berries, but any berries really work. Orange berries are just great generic berries that work on pretty much almost all Pokemon. Smoke bombs are phenomenal for trying to stealth without having a bush so you can sneak up on Pokemon. And then having some sort of item that can stun Pokemon is really great too. The spoiled apricorns are great, but you can also use mud balls here. And these sticky blobs are going to be incredible. And the sneak spray is really good too if you're trying to sneak up on Pokemon. Those are the only items you actually need. So, and you want to be in bushes too if you're trying to catch Pokemon. So you see this Elekid is eating this berry. And I only have research level 6 on him complete, right? So what I just did there is I hit ZL. And when I was close enough, I focused on him. And then when you hit ZL and you're holding it, you can hit down on the D-pad. And it'll just immediately bring you to the decks, right? So I saw from that that he was only research level 6, and now I can actually see what I need to do with him. Big tip, baby Pokemon are some of the hardest Pokemon to get to research level 10. What I recommend is spam throw berries. As you can see here, that him eating berries will increase our research level, and you can just keep doing this. They're really hard to spawn, and they don't have a lot of good ways for you to actually level them up outside of catching, as you can see here. And whenever you give them a berry and you complete a task. So I completed one, and now I could just completed three because it's highlighted, right? That means each one of these will give me plus two resource level. So me giving him that third berry that he just ate is going to actually... I'm actually at resource level eight right now. So now I just need to give him two more berries, and now he's going to hit resource level 10 because I've already caught two of them. And those gave me four total because, as you can see, one catching one just gave me plus two. And then catching my second actually gave me another plus two. But there we go. So now we just need to feed him one more berry and we're good to go. Fortunately, we ran out of berries. So that's unfortunate. But you can always just throw a wing ball right at the back of the head of the Pokemon. And if that fails, then what you can do is you can just enter into battle. And you can use this opportunity to try to actually either catch the Pokemon immediately or maybe try to work on your research task. So in this case, I know Umbreon need baby doll eyes to get his research up so i'm just gonna do some agile style baby doll eyes because umbreon can get research points from either agile or strong style uh moves so just by adding the extra strong or uh agile style to it is going to be helpful anyways and then baby uh baby doll eyes 
was another research thing. So that was us working on another thing, two at once. And now catching this Elekid is gonna give us more research points for the Elekid. So you wanna be as optimal as possible. And if we don't catch it here, which we did, we did catch it, so that was great. And that's gonna increase our research again, because that was three out of three, and now we completed our Elekid research. I do want to note that it's very important to make sure you look at the Pokemon's moves while you're doing research. So like, as example, Jolteon. Jolteon may not naturally have Baby Doll to Eyes selected on it, but that's definitely one of his research tests. So make sure to switch over Baby Doll Eyes. Same with like Thunderbolt. Make sure your Jolteon has Thunderbolt in order to get some tasks done. As I mentioned earlier, I think it's best to focus on Alpha Pokemon that instead of actually using like your own Lucario, try to get the task done, I recommend going to the Alpha Pokemon and using your own Pokemon to try to get your task done on that Pokemon, while the Alpha Lucario in this case may use some of its moves on us. And for us, we're looking for it to use Aura Sphere, Close Combat, or anything in Agile style. We can also, us just defeating it or catching it, it's gonna help it as well to get that research up, or even us just stunning out of battle with any sort of stun items. And there we go, we got our stun on it. So we actually technically finished our Lucario, but just for the sake of the video, we're gonna send Jolteon out here just to use it as a punching bag to try to get our research task up, right? So we know that Agile Style Baby Doll Eyes is gonna be a thing that we can use against Lucario that's gonna do well overall for us. And the Pokemon does not need to survive battle for the research to pass. So the fact that I just did this with Jolteon means that research is gonna stick and we're good to go. And now we can go with a strong style Thunderbolt to try to get our Thunderbolt task up and our strong style task up as well. Lastly is to do mass outbreak. So we have a Combi mass outbreak here. So if we wanted to hunt Combi and get that research level 10, well, we can very easily go to the mass outbreak of Combi, do them all, throw Pokeballs at them, catch them, defeat them, whatever you need to do for the research and get them to level 10. And they appear on the map like this, right? This is also an excellent way of shiny hunting as well, if you didn't know, and I made a video on that topic as well. If there is not a Pokemon that you want to do a research hunt on, well, you can always go back to the village and then refresh it. This is going to be excellent, especially for the baby Pokemon, because the baby Pokemon are hard to spawn. But if you happen to, you know, get a baby Pokemon to spawn, definitely do this. And so this time we got three Pokemon spawning, which is pretty awesome. So five Pokemon can spawn at once. That's pretty rare. But hey, this is definitely one of the best things that you can do. I recommend doing this throughout the entire game as well once you unlock these because it's going to save you a lot of work. Well, guys, I hope this video was really helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys next time. More Pokemon action. Peace out and have a great one.